understand who killing the dog was. Uh, well, I just think... Me, uh... <laughs> what's up mike what's happening man how you been been good man been good how about you we're doing good i think we're coming up close to a year anniversary yes we are uh, it's definitely so uh over a year that we've linked up and uh started talking about all this yes i mean we started prepping yeah and we were like okay this is how it'll go and then we'll get into that for the anniversary show this is a lot, so just to let everyone know and you too i'm actually in dallas right now Ooh. and yeah i'm in dallas and what you doing um, there i'm filming did you ever hear louder with crowder dude you like it dude you watch it dude you serious what is that? the mug that's the louder oh, with crowder mug oh get out of here yeah which yeah, you, we- you ordered that online no, uh, actually, I stole it from Annie. Uh, when we had Dave on, he sent it to us. Oh, I saw him last night. For all of you, Dave Landai, you can go check him out. Um, that was a that was a great interview. That was a really great interview. Yeah, he's a cool um, dude. Yeah, so I got to be honest. I don't, it's called uh, the I forgot the segment, but. Um, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm doing. So what am I walking into? Am I doing, I just know I'm a fan. I'm a big time fan. So is it, is, is it a regular show? Like they, they're talking about like they do stuff four or five days a week and stuff. Yeah. They're, they're pretty crazy on that show as far as what they uh, record and, and um, the days they record and the amount of stuff they, uh, they capture. But uh, pretty much on the same uh, wavelength as uh, you know, what you put out there and whatnot. So oh. it'll, it'll be a nice, it'll be a nice, uh, mix. So you mean, so you mean like when you say what I put out there, like your views, your views and stuff, to, yeah. trying to think for yourself, Yes. yes. trying to do your own investigating before you become a cockatoo and just right. repeat what you see on tell a vision. Common Got sense, it. common sense, common being the magic s- word. Yeah. Common sense and be humble about it. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we got cool stuff today. This is um, there, there's some there's some really good stuff today. First of all, we're gonna get juicy right out of the gate, and then um, we're gonna take a couple twists and turns today in the Bruniverse. Okay, so I just finished my Colorado tour. I have a really cool thing at the end of this show where comedian Josh Blue who has cerebral palsy, you, you might have seen it, wherever you saw him, doesn't matter. Um, I asked him to join me on stage in Denver, and he came out, and we're going to show you what happened at the end. I, he told me this story when he came to Florida um, about touring with the comedian Ron White. So he's going out on this tour with Ron White, and he tells me this story. And, you know, because he's... Yes, it's because he has several palsy, so it definitely adds his arms moving. And he just, he's totally humble and talks openly about all of it. And he tell, dude, I was howling. I'm like, Can you please come tell this story on stage? And sure enough, he showed up. I asked him that night. I put him on the spot. I'm like, listen, you have the show. You go up and please do this. And he was like, yeah, you really want me to? Like, dude, it's hilarious. You got to tell the story. Um, so that's coming at the end of this a Bruniverse uh, segment, but let's get juicy. And then I want to read. Um, I want to read to you a message that I got from uh, on Instagram from someone from the military that wrote a pretty heavy message to me, and I want all of you to hear it. It's it's very powerful. So. Please hang in there until then, and then after that, we'll uh, we'll get into the Josh Blue. But right now, let's get juicy. <laughs> okay, this is all right. I know we're not bunker. We don't need to be bunker. But before this gets nuts, so if you have not seen this, now you will. Put my place video. Secondly, Jimmy Kimmel, 
viral this. I fight to eradicate childhood malnutrition from the planet. And until they release the flight logs, you, the mainstream media, Hollywood, are all pedophiles to me. Eat so, Mike, do you know what he's referring to? Uh, I can only assume it's something with Epstein, I think, maybe, possibly. Okay. okay. He just unfiltered live called out Jimmy Kimmel and referred to him as a p And everyone else he just referred to, he referred to the mainstream media who's involved in there and all that jazz. And what he's referring to, the flight logs, now, nobody knows that they're fact. Nobody knows. I, I, I'm i not saying it's real. I don't know squat. It's all alleged. It's all alleged. But I'll tell you this. You can't. It, all right. First of all, we're going to start with the with, with the flight locks. Now, if you don't know, he's ta- he's referring to. Epstein's flight logs, who went to the island to be with what he was busted for and Maxine Glasswell, whatever her name is, which, by the way, you never saw her. You have yet to see her since she's been arrested. You only saw drawings. You never saw the court case. Uh, you know, OJ's 24-7. Here's a, a, a trial that's maybe the biggest in human history we're talking about trafficking children and and do you see how the circus works hey uh trump 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 the word trump sells all eyes are now are like over here hey january 6 uh, trump got invaded uh, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. What happened to that Maxine and where's this list that they said in the media and the judge said, we're not going to, we're not going to let out the list. So this is what this guy's referring to. He's referring to until you release the list, you're all considered to me. That's what this guy said. I ain't saying that. I don't know. Jack squat. But now that it's out there, this isn't the first time it's been out there. I'm begging all of you to watch Ricky Gervais at the Oscars two years ago, where he did an eight-minute live, uncensored monologue, pretty much calling everyone in the room, didn't say names, pals. It's a really cute word for children. You see how they use the nice little words? Hey, pal. <laughs> yeah, you know, the young love. Taking an innocent, you might as well take a, a, a baby deer. Innocent. <laughs> What's? Be careful the words they use. The pretty little, it's a pet. File. It sounds like a sounds like a flower. What a beautiful little pedophile. They would never say child. <laughs> it's pedophilia. How cute. This guy puts the name out. And listen. I don't know if I, I, and what he's referring to is a list of very specific names. That have been everywhere. Clearly, if the UFC fighter is mentioning it, this is far and wide. The people have seen this list. And if you haven't seen the list, it's been floating on the internet for over two years. I saw this list two years ago and I went, I did one of these. I did, what? No. Oh my God. How is this? You got to be. What? I, and listen, I will not mention names because I don't know squat until that. Li- but 
why isn't the list out there? I will tell you why. Just a theory. I don't know Jack Squat, just a comedian, just a dummy trying to live his life. If that list is true, and I don't know about you, but if I'm Jimmy Kimmel, who just got called by the world, the whole world is seeing this. The UFC community, the regular people community, I saw everyone I'm talking to has seen this. This guy say Jimmy Kimmel is a p until, and he's not a, we don't know that. You can't, you can't say things like that. I mean, you better back that. But if I'm Jimmy Kimmel, the first thing I would have done is my first monologue, like, hey, I'm addressing, man, I don't know what kind of list you're talking about, but I don't, and listen, maybe, maybe some people are on the list and they didn't know. Maybe, let's say, because I tell you what, I can see it. I'm on, I'm on Saturday Live, I'm doing movies, and all of a sudden, you know, you want to get bigger and bigger, and then this guy comes on, like, hey, I don't know if you know me, but here's a picture of, uh, I'm just throwing there, here's a picture of uh, Barack Obama, and, uh, I hang out with big stars, big stars, here's, uh, here's uh, Jim Carrey, you want to hang out with these people, they come on my jet, and we're going to head down the island, oh my God, it's going to be great, and you, you go to the jet, you're like, I'm my God, I'm on a jet. And boom, that's how quick it happens. And then you, if it was me, and as soon as I land the island, I could see it happening. And you land and you're like, uh, yeah, I don't know. When's the next flight out? Like, I thought, I thought we were, you know, eating steak, you know, drinking like really expensive. I didn't know we were, yeah, I didn't know we were doing this, man. This is, yeah, no, don't film me, please. Not cool. Not cool. I want to get on the first flight back. I mean, that's just me. <laughs> I'm wacky. If these names are true, and I'm going to tell you right now, there's some names on there that when I say broke my heart, it breaks my heart. They're huge actors, huge, huge musicians, huge. And the thing is, it's out there. The list is out there. I've seen it multiple times. And like I said, it started two years ago. It's up to you to go look for it. And so many of you are not ready. If it was true, if it was true, which is a little weird that the whole, yeah, 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 it's a human trafficking trial. It's not, let's talk about abortion. Let's talk about gun laws. Let's talk about you, no, 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 no. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Why aren't we talking about that? And I'll tell you why. It has the potential to collapse governments, music industry, film and TV industry. Do you realize the men, we're talking like, okay, here's Hollywood, here's government, including ours. Um, and, and here's uh, uh, all of Hollywood and all the biggest musicians you grew up going, I love them. And all of a sudden just <laughs> gone. Because if I find a name, which I have to say, there are certain names, and I don't know if they're true. Nobody knows they're true until they officially come out and go, yeah. It's true. It's on the internet. Some guy reading the names, reading them. He read them. But here's what's interesting. Nobody that has been put out there has claimed, hey, man, this stuff is all BS. Stop including me. I haven't seen it. And I'll tell you what, if my name was on a list, the first thing I'd say is like, dude, you better prove that now. Now. Because I know you're full of nitrogenous waste. Nitrogenist waste. If you found out, just for giggles, just for giggles, right? not a name, not, not I, I don't know anything about. If you found out, um, what? L l let's say I don't know. Uh, who's your favorite musician, Mike? Favorite musician? Yeah, yeah. I I couldn't even pull a name out of a hat. I what know more band you know? names. What's that? What concert are you going to? What, what next concert? You're like, oh, dude, I'm paying. I'm going to see Guar. 
Guar? Did you say Guar? Guar, Guar, Guar. Yeah. Guar from like yeah. the eighties. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they wear outfits and all that. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I had no clue. You oh yeah, are, dude. <laughs> you are, all right? Let's say you found out Guar, right? Okay, Guar right. is is was part of a list that did really disturbing things to kids. Can you still listen to music? No, because that that whole vision of them has just now been tarnished, Gone. and and yeah. Gone. I, I've seen I've seen the list. I've seen some of the names on there, and honestly, some of the names broke my heart. Dude, and I hope they were like what you said with the scenario. Like they showed up and said, uh, "When's the next plane out of here?" Because I can't imagine some of these people that are on that list going, "Oh yeah, this is cool. Let's totally get into this." I I just can't. I well, can't do it. Well, I I I. I it... <sighs> I've seen the list too, and. It made me also wonder from all my interactions with them and and I it I tell you, man, look at that list. And I will tell you this. If I was on that, you can't tell me nobody has notified. Listen, I hear minor things about me, like, oh, I heard this comedian wished you this, this, and that. My listen, people immediately direct message me, go, hey man, did you hear what this human being said? So you can't tell me if you're on a certain level, you have not heard that you're on this list that's floating around the internet for at least two years. And I'll tell you what, I've not heard one of those human beings on that list talk about it. And I'll tell you right now, now that this UFC fighter put it out there and this thing's all over the internet and just going worldwide, if I was on there, I'd immediately go, hey man, I heard what the fighter said. <laughs> Just, I know a lot of you now are looking up this so-called list, but uh, here's what happened with me before you start looking at me. But I'm telling you, once you go, once it, it, if it ever became real where you're like, oh, so-and-so's on it, you'll never watch that movie again. Anything affiliated to them, you won't, you, if, if a production company is linked to it, other, uh, who directed it? Who's this person married to? Who's this person's best friends? Who makes all their movies? How long have they spent time together? You can't tell me that the, the web is so big that you would take down an entire, like think of how much, if I had 15 hit movies, hit hundreds of millions of dollars worth, and now it came out, not only are you losing all that, but everything you're involved in is crashing. Do you now understand the magnitude? If you see a huge judge, a huge politician, and you now everyone's starting to go, you're talking about crashing systems that we can't even comprehend. But the guy just put it out there, allegedly. But I'm just telling you right now, man, if I'm on there, I'm addressing that. I think, I don't know who, the people on that list, you better call your publicist and start start either barking or clearing your name real quick, real quick. Um, well, the thing is, too, it's it's also like uh, Schrodinger's cat. Like, we, we don't know if these names allegedly that are on this list are are true so right now right. it's it happened it didn't happen so it's like is the cat dead is the cat alive we have no idea and it's it's hard to say like i'm gonna stop listening to them or watching them and it sucks because just them being even named on the list is like ah oh, that sucks but we don't know if they went through with whatever happened so it's kind of it's it's, it's a it sucks it just it's sucks. Just, listen i know for a fact that there are there were names on there that I'm fans of, right? And I literally took them off my, I took them off my Spotify, yeah. And I and I don't even know, but that's the power of this list that's floating on the internet. It's no one knows if it's real, but I've already cut out like, whoa, you know what? 
but then I do remember there's there's a I don't want to there's one that did have an incident many years ago and I was like huh you know they did get caught doing this man like, yeah. maybe it made that but dude just the effect of me I cut it I'm like gone delete 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 never again interviews pff, nope put it like no but I don't even know if it's real but I tell you. That list is whoo, buddy. And more and more people are saying, show me the list. They're doing this to the back. Humanity is now doing this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but right, right, right. right. Pro life, pro choice. But uh, I want to talk about this. What, 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 what is on this? I want to know about the children and what exactly is going on. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Trump got invaded. Okay, nice distraction. That name sells. Trump sells. But who's buying? Boom, doo, 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 doo. Hey, look, we're in trouble. People are catching on. Quick, throw out the Trump name. That's the power of that name, whether you hate him or like him. He sells. Trump sells. But who's buying? Trump sells. But who's buying? No. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice song. Where's the list? I feel like Nicholson should be like, show me the list. Or maybe he doesn't want it shown. Who knows? All right. I had, I had to, I have to address that. I have to. It's all over the internet. It's all over the place. Ah. <sighs> Just breathe, man. Just I'm breathe. breathe. <laughs> I'm on like, you know what it is? I'm on four shots of espresso. Oh, you're on Sibs level. Yeah, dude, I dropped three deuces since I woke up. <laughs> I had four shots, three deuces. Four shots of espresso, three deuces. Clean as a whistle. <clears throat> I want to I wanna talk to you about the power of... And it is a power of putting specific energy out into the world. And everybody should work on this, including myself. Everybody should work on this. And it really is that simple. And then you will understand the power of fake, uh, I shouldn't say fake, just the power of media, including Hollywood and all the great distractions of the world that piss you off and emotionally pull you out of your life and then put you in a direction that you never even knew you'd be going. And you have no right to even go there because, you know, they just they suck you out. No one believes in, in, in the power of emotional spell. It exists. And this one's beautiful. And it's powerful. <clears throat> so I don't want to give their, I, I wish I could give their, um, their Instagram feed out there, but I'm going to wait for their permission. Maybe we can get them on the show. So this person messages me and says, and he doesn't know I'm reading this. I read my, my, Instagram messages. Now, if they're really long, most of the time I, I try to read them. But if like, if you start it, these are the ones that hit me once in a while. Um, is there a way to write an email to Jim? I'm a disabled vet from Long Island. Now, usually at this point, I go, all right, like, cause I don't know who, I don't know who's writing this. I don't know if they're lying. I don't know if they're just saying that, but my first instinct already is when you start saying I'm a this and I'm a that is, okay, we're going to want something. We're going to ask for something. And that's not where you went. Is there a way to write an email to Jim? I am a disabled vet from Long Island and I wanted to let him, I wanted to let him know the effect that his channel, the Bruniverse, his comedy, um, the effect that his channel and his comedy, that he has, that is the effect that he has had on me. Let's see what that he has had on me. That's 
That's that's the message right there. See if you think I'm messing around. Um, he goes, uh, for me, it would be very important to convey, to let him know how deeply he has reached some of us. The short version. He has saved me in a lot of ways. As you can see, it is almost 5 a.m. I have not slept at night in months. PTSD and depression. Yeah, finding Jim's channel and watching him, he has no idea what this has done for my life. So if there is a way that I can write, let him know, I would appreciate it. If not, it's cool. I know he has a lot happening and all those Hollywood friends and mega millions. Just kidding. Dude, whoever you are, you, you have no clue the effect in life you have. You know, there's so many veterans. And there's another great distraction no one talks about. They get sent off because they're taking orders, whether the orders are correct or come from a place of necessity. And then they have to endear what they see, what they've done. And then question it all. When you take another human's life, you eventually question it. I saw it with my own father. I would always ask my dad, Dad, did you ever, like when you were, when you were, did you ever do like, like hand, like shooting, like you could see the person you're shooting at? And he'd squirm, he'd go, you know, they shoot, they shoot at us, so we shoot back at them, you know, they shoot at us and we shoot at them. And I could tell, it took a while for me to understand, I could tell by his uneasiness to answer those questions that he saw the eyes of someone he took out. And whether you believe in the cause or not, whether you're a police officer, whether you're whatever you are, and you take out another human being and you're being told and ordered to take out specific human beings, you can't question that. You will do, as Metallica lyrics, disposable heroes, you will do what I say when I say back in the front and you will die when I say you must die back in the front you coward you coward <laughs> you blind man back in the front that's a heavy burden to put on a human being and then you add the layers of then questioning, what did I do? Did I morally do the right thing? Was this a just cause? Or am I just protecting some rich, cynical, demonic monsters? Hence the PTSD and depression. My dad, I believe, eventually realized he can't live that way. He can't live constantly questioning. Um, and he also, I watched him live through what these, what these people go through. When I say these people, all military, all family attached to military, all, all police officers and attached to police officers, anyone in that line of duty that you are to take in orders to take care of a situation. <clears throat> You eventually 
start realizing, you know what, there was, there was, that's where we were. That's where we were at at that time in life. My dad drank. I saw him have a flashback. I saw my dad have a flashback. You know, they kind of make it goofy on television and all that jazz and, you know, the cartoons and make it over the top. But when you really sit and think about the intensity and I and, and not until I saw my father. Literally, I came home late at night and I was drinking. I was all messed up. I was young 20s. Uh, I was living in Florida. I came home and I didn't know he was passed out on the couch, which is on the other side of my kitchen. So I come home and I'm, you know, I hammered, hammered. Three genes from just out of this world. Um, the, the alcohol is just in my brain, chowing. I can't take this part of his brain. Let's take his thought process. Let's take his morality. Um, here's the bad decision part. Just, um, so I'm, I'm microwaving uh, White Castle cheeseburgers. Beep, beep, beep. I'm trying to be quiet. Take out the ketchup. I'm dipping. I'm eating white. Ketchup is on Fat Jimmy's face. It's the mess. And my dad gets up. I, I almost jumped out of my skin. He gets up. I go, oh, dad, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Catch up, White Castle. I was, I was so sorry, okay? It's just me. It's just me. And he doesn't see me. He doesn't acknowledge me. He's looking outward, and he, he gives me the quiet, the shh. And I'm thinking, oh, I know I'm not being loud. Sorry. I don't want to wake mom up. And he, he goes, shh. He's just out of his chair. And then I walked around to get in front of him, and I saw his eyes were somewhere else. Had nothing to do with me waking up my mom or being loud no more. He was back in World War II. He was on an island that was overrun by the Japanese. Him and the, the amount of men that were left, that were taken out, the amount that survived, are hiding for their lives in the dark waiting to be rescued. And I saw it. And he, he looked at me and he went, shh, I went, dad, you okay? You're freaking me out. You're freaking me out, dad. What, what's going on? And he goes, they're just land crabs. I went, what? What are you talking about? What is it? What, 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 Land crabs? You got crabs? Dad, you got crabs? Dude, we can't tell mom you got crabs. It was bad. You want a, you want a white castle? I got a white castle. They're just land crabs. And then he went back to see one. And I had to find out later that when they were in the Philippines, there's these land crabs. And at nighttime, when they would move, you don't know if that's people sneaking up on you while you're the one that has to stay up all night to protect your boys. And imagine that intensity every day of your life. Who's gonna try to kill me today? Well, let me tell you something, brother. This message, don't you dare, don't you dare, don't you dare for one second think you're not important in this lifetime. Because here's the problem with the world today. We don't know why we exist. We are spiritual. We are born with a spirit, not science. A spirit, a soul. And you never know the power you have when you give out beauty, when you give out love, when you give out compliments. 
you, my friend, have just woken up and reached out to so many people because you sent this loving, powerful message. It means, it meant so much to me. Is there a way that I can write? Let him know I would appreciate it. The short version, he has saved me. No, you, you, you have just saved me. And hopefully, we are now saving others. Because, again, it's like that saying, one person can change the whole world for the better, as long as they don't give a damn who gets the credit. Don't underestimate the power and the longevity of putting beauty out there or grace. I'm going to tell you a story. It's going to blow your freaking mind. <clears throat> and I might have told it on here. I don't remember, to be honest with you. It doesn't matter. So, Even before I get into the story, if this person, and this just, just shows you social media, what is, how it has demonized people. Because he, he, I get people going, hey, man, you suck and you should die. What do you think you're getting out of life when you do that? Oh, I don't think you're funny. I don't think, I think you're an ant. What do you think you're getting out of that? You have shortened your, your you, you have shortened everything about your life that should be respected. If you don't have something nice to say, keep your mouth shut. If you don't have anything nice to write, Keep your fingers off the buttons. You're a waste. You're a waste. This spreads beauty. Makes you think more. You know, years ago, this is very important for you to, to understand. We think... This is our world. We think the world evolves around us. It's how we act in this world that makes the rest of the world react. And, you know, years and years and years ago, we don't know the answers. Like, dude, you went to hell. My father went to hell. You went to hell. Instead of dwelling on the hell you were in, you are now a warrior. You can't, it can't get any worse. You, there, nothing can conquer you now. Nothing. It's all relevant. You have become a, 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 a warrior of the soul. And you may have you may have done things maybe you're ashamed of. Maybe you did things that you, you wish you never did or took a life or whatever because you were ordered to. That doesn't make you a bad human being. It doesn't mean it means the circumstances in this world that, 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 that forces us to do that, that we're born into. But now you have the tools. Now you have the tools. Dude, think about this. All that depression you're dealing with, the PTSD, you still were able to overcome that and send me this message. And that, that, that happened for a reason, whether you want to believe it or not. Why me? Why anyone? Now I'm telling the world. And there's gonna there's a lot of people like you. And there's a lot of forums to help you. You are way more important than you can ever imagine. The knowledge you have inside, the heart you have inside, the soul that you nourish 
is so big and powerful. They want you to be depressed. They want you to have PTSD. They want you to dwell on that. You're bigger than that. You got to know the devil to fight the devil and confront the devil. Your life is worth more than you can ever imagine, brother. My dad, I remember him saying, you know, Jim, he would never complain. He never complained. He'd always say, you know, Jim, just do the right thing. Whatever that is in the moment, do the right thing. That man grew up with 10 brothers and sisters. Mom died when he was three. Full-blown father alcoholic, can you blame him, during the Depression. Goes to World War II. He's there for a couple. All the brewers. All the brewers. And all those brewers came back. That's a real movie right there. I mean, no, no offense to Private Ryan, but whew, that's a story of warriors right there. Brewers. One's captured. Captured by the Nazis. Escaped. One shot down over Nazi Germany, parachutes, plays a deaf mute for over a month and a half, Uncle Charlie, whose son later went to Nam and never came back. Um, to see that much hell, that much hell, that's hell. And never take that out on me. Never took it out of me. He could have, I would have understood it. But as I grow older, which is God's grace, not our grace, God's timing, not our timing. We're spiritual creatures that come out of a human. That's what happened. You good, Mike? Yeah, man. Okay. Out of all that hell that all these people go through, as we're sitting there wondering about uh, 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 the insurrection. Get out of here with that nonsense. Stop it. Uh, Donald Trump, stop it. There's such a deep humanity that they keep making us want, look the other way. Stop it. My dad was in hell and brought me heaven. Never believed in the God, but he brought me heaven. There's a lot of heaven in you, brother. You went to hell. You have those weapons. And he was fearless. Fearless. He'd take on six guys. I told you the Delapine story. Six kids. Most the most scariest people in the world on my porch ready to kill my dad. He was in the war. He ain't afraid of you little punk asses. He came out. I almost had a cardiac arrest watching this. I was, I was a little kid. And I'll never forget. He went, what is this? 60? One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, well, you might get the best of this old man, but one of you are going to die. Which one's it going to be? Give me you. Give me you. Give me you. And eventually he scared them off. <laughs> he scared six guys off. Because they saw, they didn't understand where he's coming from, but they saw where he was. Like you, brother. Now that doesn't mean you use that, but when you have to, to protect your family, your life, yourself. You need to debate about something. You see things differently now. Those are powerful weapons and tools. And don't ever feel bad. You just inspired me to get that, aware uh, that, that awareness out there to another level. So to you, much love to you. Um, thank you for an incredible message. 
I didn't save you. I didn't. You did. You did. You had the the notion to reach out. You had that feeling, that gut feeling that God gives you whatever you want to define as God. I'm not talking religious. I love when people say that too. Like, are you religious? No. Religious is the word that they use to demonize anyone looking into spirituality or God. The concept of religious. Oh, you know how many, war, you know how many wars are created by religion? No, they're created by man that deceives the spirit in you. The soul in you, the God that's inside you right now. That's the great deception. Oh, are you religious? I just had a guy the other day. He, he saw me at the uh, comedy club and it blew my mind because he's like, you know, dude, I try to take my life twice, which is horrifying. I gave myself, you know, I, I had diabetes. I had this. I said, Did you were born with diabetes. He went, no. So you drank a lot. He's like, yeah, I drank a lot. Twice and money. I was just scared, 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 money, money, scared, scared. And, you know, I, you, are you all religious? Because, you know, I, you know, I don't believe. I don't think. Well, then, then what, what do you have to back your life? You know, one instinct he's telling me, oh, I try to take my life twice. Good God almighty. He's better now. But he's still, that, that's too weird for him. That, that world's too crazy. You know how many people think that way? It's in us, man. You just reached out. You, you had the instinct, had the drive through your PTSD and your depression, just out of all the hell that you've been in, you were able to go, let me send Jim a message that I, I, I appreciate. That simple of a giving of a gesture towards another human being just changed the perspective. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Because sometimes I don't even understand what I'm saying. So. Thank you. It was a long thank you, but at the end of the day, thank you. Because it's people like you that inspire me. And I hope you're well. And I'm sure I'm going to hear from you after this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, all right. Enough of that. Holy bonkers. I was going to tell a different story, a great story, but we'll, we'll, we'll save that another time, which is another mind-blowing story. Um, let's end it on a, a – a, we're going to take a different turn here, okay? Um, so I was in Colorado. This is a tough transition, but we have to. <laughs> He's with me. <laughs> I, okay, we're in a war, death, and spirit, and God. Okay, so anyway, let's talk about Josh. Um, <laughs> That's what's great about the show, man, because we can go all over the place. I agree, Mike. I agree. So anyway, um, along working myself back to a lighter note, I'm having it. I've had great shows out here. Um, I was in Colorado and Denver, Colorado, and Josh Blue was there. Um, and like I said, he came and you know, he's had a couple beers or whatever he does. He, he likes to hang. He likes to hang. I can't keep up with him. I can't keep up with that hang, but he likes to hang. And we got cool conversations about kids and life. And he's um, he's a really good guy. I, I cherish the conversations that we've had. They're a little deeper than just comedy. We go into family and deeper depths of other stuff. But I had a really cool moment. And I'm going, moment. Did you see that, Mike? I said moment. Yeah. We, had a, we had a very good moment. <laughs> I tell you, this moment was quite amazing. <laughs> um, so 
he comes backstage. Uh, he's talking with Joe. We're hanging out. Life is good. And this is why I bring my camera guy around all the time. The kid. Uh, kid Serpico. And we just did our first Metallica uh, when we were touring Metallica. This is, this is cool stuff coming. It's cool stuff coming. I don't know if I'm going to do Patreon. We'll have more stuff. I don't know. Where, and whatever. Um, so I want to bring this video for you guys. It's Josh Blue, comedian, cerebral palsy. And I don't know. I haven't seen the video. I just know the kid. I say, hey, man, send this to Mike so we can get it on the, on the Bruniverse. He tells the story of touring with Ron White. And, and, and again, I haven't seen the video. And I don't know if it's in there. But there's one part where I go, hey, Josh, I don't know if, if some of these people know the, your condition. And they're actually questioning if I if I'm a sick bastard and I just brought out like a really guy that lets like completely wasted out of his mind, because if you don't know he has cerebral palsy, you might be like, dude, is this guy, like, what's this guy? All right. You know, the first time I did open mic night was long Island, this place called governors. And, um, this guy, Jeff Zabrowski was the host. And there was a guy with cerebral palsy in the audience. That was a plant of a drunk heckler. Because he sounded like he was wasted. So at the end of that open mic night, the shill comes on stage and he, he goes, I'm funnier than, you know, Jeff goes, if you think you're so damn funny, why don't you come up here? He's like, I've been waiting for you to say that. And the crowd goes nuts. And he goes up and he reads a poem. It's hilarious. Uh, only to find out, oh, it's his friend. And this is all shtick. So <clears throat> the point of the story is, I think some people might have thought Josh was, they didn't realize who he was. But either way, I'm really glad we got to do this. So we're going to end with Josh Blue coming out at the end of my set in Denver and uh, telling the Ron White story of him touring with the, with the legendary Ron White. And I uh, thank you all very much to you, my friend. I don't even know your name, to be honest with you. I know your handle and all that. Thank you for inspiring me and thank you for the phenomenal energy that you put my way that I'm able to share with so many listeners. It means more than you ever imagine. And I hope nothing but pure happiness and you understand the power that's in front of you. Don't ever look backwards, brother. Backwards is gone. It's gone. Only right where you're at. Right where you're at. And right now, I don't know about you, but you put me in a good place. You kept things in perspective for me. And it came at a very timely fashion. Um, enjoy the Josh Blue. I'll be in Las Vegas. Mm, I'm doing Naples, Florida. I just picked up a gig because they canceled, so I'm going to go fill in. Then Las Vegas with my friend Dan that you guys saw on the podca podcast last week. And um, that's the Shabigal. I'll see you guys out in the road. I got a bunch of dates coming out. St. Petersburg, Florida, Ocala, Florida, Atlanta, Asheville, North Carolina, uh, New Hampshire. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff coming out. I'll announce it soon. But I got to say, this I'm, I can't thank you all enough. The amount of you that are showing up at the live shows has really taken me back. A lot of it is from the Bruniverse. And... Thank you. Thanks for hanging out in the Bruniverse today. Enjoy Josh Blue. Mike, all the best to you, brother. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, man. Later. Later. Um, if you don't mind, I'd love to bring out one of your own. I want, I want to do a tour with this guy called Blue and Brew. Please, please let Josh come out. Bring, bring out Josh Blue. So. I guess I guess they only have one mic, so I'll leave it there, Josh. Josh goes before he. I said, "Is it cool if I bring you out?" He goes, "Yeah, one mic or or multiple, because I have multiple COVID going on inside me right now." Like, 
at, le at least four kinds. So, now, I don't know if you know it. I mean, Josh, Josh tours on his own. He's, he's, he's his own legend. But he toured with, he just finished with Larry the Cable Guy. But before he does that, before he did it, he comes over to the house. He's like, dude, I toured with Ron White. I went, oh, my God. Right. So, but then he goes, it's not what you think. So, <laughs> I said, please, please just tell them. I think they'd love to hear about you touring with, with, with Ron White. Are you, you got another mic? Oh, thank you so much. We don't thank need you very you much. Anymore. Thank you. Come on. Go ahead. So, so, yeah, so he comes over. He's like, so I toured with Ron White. I'm like, oh, wow, what's that like? And he just, all right, all right I'll let you tell is. the story. So, this is basically what happened, right? I've been a touring comic for a long time. Ron White came to me. He asked me to start touring with him. And it was at a dark time in his life. His road manager had just passed away, and it was his good buddy. And, yeah. and I kind of like got to fill this void for him. And it was a, a, a powerful moment for me in my career. And, and it was the first night I got to open for him. We're playing this big arena. And he's so kind, he invites me into his dressing room. He's like, whatever is here, is, you're welcome to it. And I'm like, thank you. And there's a big bucket of Budweiser. And I... <laughs> I, I like I like Budweiser, you know, and and nobody was drinking it, and I was like respectful. I was watching the watching the bucket. <laughs> there's, there's only there's only four guys on the tour, you know what I mean? Like we're just nobody's touching it, and uh, I was like, well, fuck it, I'll just have one. You know? <laughs> and, uh, I knocked that sucker down. <laughs> then uh, I'm, all I'm doing time-wise in front of Ron is 15 minutes, which to me is like, I can fart that long, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like an easy gig for me. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. So then I come down, I have a fun time on stage. I'm like, well, let me have another one of those Budweiser's, you know? <laughs> drink another one. Ron goes on, I drink another one. <laughs> and I'm in my dressing room. I just keep going into his room. <laughs> and, and coming back like. <laughs> 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 so now Ron finally comes off stage and I'm in the my dressing room, which mind you, there ain't shit in there but like a chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there drinking the very last Budweiser. <laughs> and Ron walks by the door. He looks in there, he goes, well, it looks like we finally found somebody to drink the road manager's, manager's beer. <laughs> 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 and it was a shrine to his friend. <laughs> 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 Wait, you, you didn't even tell what you did on the bus before this. No, I never did on the bus. Right, we'll get to that later. <laughs> so then the next day I have a show with Ron again, and I'm like super embarrassed, and we're like in a van together, and I'm like, hey, Ron. Sorry about drinking your friend's gravestone or whatever. <laughs> and, then, and then I looked him in the eyes and was like, but now that I know that was 
for him? Is it bad if I do it again tonight? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> can, you, can I just can you just tell the one, one other one for me, please? But is is it okay? So what, Wait, but before he even tells me this, right? Which is already hilarious. He has a shrine. He doesn't know it. He's all excited. He's like, Oh God! I'm talking with Ron White. It's gonna be great. It's gonna it's gonna be like rock star stuff. He's got. He come, you start telling me about his tour bus. Oh my! You want me to tell that? Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> All right, fuck it. It's, it's a Sunday night. Why not? You know. <laughs> and I promise I won't bother you anymore. Please. I need to. Leave. <laughs> does, does anybody else feel held hostage by Jim Boone? <laughs> Talked about this in football. Hey, 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 hey! Don't forget. You want to be big, don't you? <laughs> I'm a happy boy. You know what's even funny, Josh, if I can say, I guarantee you there's a couple people that are like, is he, is he wasted or? <laughs> like, they don't even know. I know, I saw a couple faces like this. Uh, I, mean, I mean, like. I do, yeah. I do have cerebral palsy, but I drank all them fucking beers. So. <laughs> Hey, to the road manager. <laughs> I'm not headlining, it's his fault. <laughs> All right, I'll tell the story. So, I, I'm on tour. The tour bus, a real nice tour bus with all run white, and like the walls are carpeted. Like that's how nice it is. It's just like a beautiful, beautiful bus, and uh, I I changed that. I know you think Ron White drinks like scotch. He likes red wine, and he's a red wine guy, and he has some real good shit. <laughs> and they poured everybody some glasses, and I just have to let you know up front, I am not good with stemware. <laughs> Pour me a nice big good job tonight glass, and then I just palsy like. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking thing went up the rug. <laughs> nah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I already, I already have drank all the beers, and now I'm doing this shit on the... <laughs> and then, we smoke a bowl. <laughs> and I put the big glass bowl, my big glass pipe, on the table, and then the bus like went around a curve, and, <laughs> and just shattered all over the fucking bus. 
And that was when I decided to get into my bunk. <laughs> and that's where I met Jim Brewer at. Keep it going, Josh Blue, man. I hope we get to tour one day. Thank you for coming out. Make sure you, you check out Josh. Thank you so much, man. All the best to all of you. Thank you. I'm still a little hung from hanging with Josh Blue, I think. Yeah, he's Gosh. he got beat up a little bit uh, last night. A little bit less. Josh night. Blue, I mean, he's... Yeah, yeah, you talk about it, because we're going to play Josh Can at the end of this. Can I talk about that for a second? Yeah. I, so when you were on stage, yeah. I didn't realize it was, I thought maybe one beer together. And then it, and then it was like, we're going to have another beer. And then, he's, and then I'm running to get him beers. How many beers did you want on us? It was... Jo Josh definitely he overserved me. Take a look around and what do you see? Put your date down tonight, we'll make it history. Hey, this is Jim Brewer, and I got my own Patreon page, and hopefully you'll check it out. Live comedy concert streamed once a month. Weekly, you host your own podcast and you interview me. Early access to the Bruniverse podcast every single week and have bonus footage and bonus segments. I promise you I'm not going to let you down. Go check out my official Jim Brewer Patreon page and I'll see you there.